Now to work on the square pyramid roofs. And all of these square pyramid roofs get made the same way. They have two sides that are triangles with quarter inch tabs that fold to the next side. And then the opposing sides are just cut straight triangles that uh, fit the shape, no tabs. So I have chosen paper for all of my roofs that I can flip so that it doesn't matter if it's going this way or this way. And that way I can maximize my paper usage. Now if you choose something else, you'll have you'll use a little bit more. But for example, for these are the courtyard roofs and I can, I've cut three pieces that are three inches by six inches. If you can't flip, you would need a fourth piece that, that's three inches by six inches. And then the courtyard roofs and the turret roofs are exactly the same dimensions. Uh, for the turret roofs, I'm using paper that comes from the 12 inch pad. So I'll need either one strip that's 3 by 12 and another strip that's 3 by 6 or you may be able to work out how to get an extra triangle in the middle of this 12 inch piece and then you would only need a small uh, extra piece to make two additional triangles and we'll talk about that in a minute. So let's look at how we're going to work on these uh, courtyard pieces. I'll just take one uh, piece to start with and I'm using this one because it's really easy to see on the reverse side here. So to start with I'm going to measure 2 and 5 eighths on the bottom 2 and 5 eighths. I'm making kind of a larger tick mark. Hopefully you can see that. It's about a quarter inch tall. And then Without moving my ruler, I'm also going to measure in a quarter inch from the left end and then at two and three eighths. And those are kind of smaller tick marks. So that gives me a center portion here that is two and one eighth with two one quarter inch uh, pieces on the sides. And then up at the top, I'm going to measure 1 and 5 sixteenths. That's a sixteenth more than a quarter of an inch. And put a tick mark there. Now the tick mark that I just drew at 1 and 5 sixteenths gets connected to these little, the smaller tick marks we made at the bottom, to the one that is sitting at 2 and 3 eighths. So I'll go ahead and connect that. And then it also connects to the one that we made at a quarter inch. And then we want to line up our ruler on the quarter inch line on the lines we just drew and draw a line that comes down. And that's going to make our tabs. Now you'll probably notice that this one on, on the left doesn't come all the way down to the bottom. That doesn't matter at all because we're going to have to cut these back anyway. And then we're going to repeat this coming in from the other side. Measure 2 and 5 eighths with a long tick mark. And then make a shorter tick mark quarter of an inch in from each one of those. And then up here at the top, an inch and five sixteenths, which is a sixteenth more than an inch and a quarter. Connect that tick mark at the top to the ones that are inside the quarter inch.
and then line up your quarter inch line on the lines you just drew and draw two more lines. Now the outside lines on each one of these are our cutting lines and the inside lines will be our scoring lines. Now before we go any further we want to draw one other line on here. I'm going to draw a dashed line at the 3 inch mark. I'm just lining this piece of paper up on my mat and I'm drawing a dashed line at the 3 inch mark and we'll use that in a few minutes. So remember we're cutting on the outside lines here. So once I have all my cuts made, I have this. I'm going to discard these two little triangles and put these two of the tabs to one side. And then this one that's in the middle, I'm going to measure an inch and a sixteenth out from that center line. I want to end up with a base that is two and one eighth. So if I measure an inch and a sixteenth from that center line, and then I'll connect those points with the top center here that I have. I'm just going to go ahead and cut those. So that gives us one of our triangles that does not have any tabs because we can discard these excess pieces. So I'm going to repeat that on a second piece and then I'll be back. Now from those first two pieces I got the four pieces with tabs that I need and two of the pieces without tabs. So from this last piece we'll cut two more triangles without tabs and we'll do that by measuring in on the bottom two and one eighth and then on the top first measure one and one sixteenth and then from that tick mark measure over two and one eighth. And then we'll cut these two triangles this one and this one and that'll give us our last two triangles that we need. Next we'll do some scoring on the pieces with the tabs if we just line up that edge where we drew our quarter inch line with the edge of our scoreboard and hold that tight against there we can score at a quarter of an inch on both sides and I'll repeat that for all four pieces so after I scored my tabs I added some 1 8 inch score tape to the two tabs and also on the roof itself I prepped it by putting some black ink on the inside and also on the bottom edges and then coming back up just a little bit an eighth of an inch or so on the four sides and then on two opposing sides I've put score tape like this because that's where we will attach our um, sides with the tabs. Now I'm holding up one of them even with the bottom so I can see where I need to cut this angle off and I want to cut it uh, up past the edge of the bottom and then also I can see that I need to uh, cut kind of an angle up here at the top as well. So I'll do that on my pieces and then I will ink these bottom edges as well. So I'll do that and then I'll be back. So I've made my little cuts. I think you can see on the corners here. I've inked at the top and the bottom. 
I also put a little ink on the top here. This shouldn't show at all, but just in case, um, I'd rather have some ink there than the raw chipboard. So now I'm going to just remove the bottom piece of score tape from that side. And then I'm going to work keeping this flush on the bottom and using my two tabs as a guide. Bring that so it's flush with the bottom down here and give that at least a finger burnish. And then we can, once we have the, the base installed, we can remove the two pieces of score tape that are on the chipboard and go ahead and attach that. And then we can remove the backing from our tabs and pull those in. Just give that a little squish up the top there. And then we'll repeat that on the opposite side. And now that I have these two sides on, I can go ahead and take two of my plain triangles. I've prepped them with some score tape coming right up to their edges and also ink those edges and I'll put them in place on the sides putting that bottom flush with my work surface and then bringing that side up and when I bring this side up I can again encourage these points from the two first sides to meet at that top point. And then we'll finish by giving everything a nice burnish. So I'll repeat that from my other courtyard tower roof. And then I'll be back. For the turret towers, I'm using this paper that came from the 12 by 12 pad. And I've decided that it's just easier to follow the same cutting scheme that I did for the courtyard towers. So I just took a strip that was three inches tall and 12 inches long and divided it into two uh, six inch pieces. And now I can use the same measuring scheme that I did for the courtyard towers. And that was the two and five eighths come in a quarter of an inch um, from each one of those and then up here on the top one and five sixteenths and you can just rewind the video to the beginning of the square tower part to see exactly how I did those pieces. Now let's work on the back corner tower roofs and these roofs are basically the same um, procedure as the ones we just did and just the dimensions have changed a little bit. Now I have four pieces of paper cut out here because I'm going to feature this side that reads almost solid and it's the back side of this paper from the 6x6 pad. Now it's almost solid but there is a faint uh, printing of uh, letters and symbols etc on here and so I'm going to treat it as directional. Now if that doesn't bother you, you can um, do the same kind of procedure that we did with, the, with these other ones that were not directional and that is have two triangles where the base is at the bottom of a piece and one triangle that is cut upside down as it were. But um, I'm going to do mine as if they're all directional. So here I have uh, one of my pieces and it's cut two and three eighths inch tall by uh, the length of the paper six inches. And I'm going to start out by, I'm going to work on the uh, wrong side of the paper here and I'll use this pen so hopefully you can see it. So I'm going to measure two and seven eighths and make my big tick mark and then come back from that a quarter of an inch so that would be at two and five eighths with a little tick mark 
and then a quarter inch in from the left side with a little tick mark as well. And then up on the top, our center tick mark is at 1 and 7 sixteenths. That's a sixteenth less than 1 and 1 half. And we're going to connect that tick mark with our inner quarter inch marks that we made. And then again, we'll line up our ruler on the quarter inch and draw another line. And those outside lines will be our cutting lines. Hopefully this isn't too busy so you can see that. And so then I'm going to measure in from the right side two and seven eighths again with my big tick mark. Come back a quarter inch on each side inside there and then up at the top again I'll measure one and seven sixteenths which is a sixteenth less than a half an inch. Connect that top mark with the inside marks on the bottom and then come out with my quarter inch mark and again on this side and my quarter inch. Now you can see there's enough room in here if you wanted to you could um, put an upside down triangle in here. It is um, the triangles with no tabs measure one and three sixteenths on either side of the uh, center line because they are two and three eighths at the base. So I'm going to repeat this on one other piece so that I'll get four pieces with tabs. And then for my four triangles that do not have tabs, I'll measure two and three-eighths on the bottom, two and three-eighths, and then measure one and three-sixteenths in on the top. That's a sixteenth less than a quarter of an inch. And connect those. And those will be our cutting lines. And then I'll do the same thing coming in from the other side, two and three eighths, and then one and three sixteenths. One and three sixteenths is half of two and three eighths. And connect those dots. And those are my cutting lines for the pieces that do not have tabs. Now, and I'll repeat that again so that I'll have four pieces without tabs. And that's how to deal with directional paper. And from there on out, it's the same procedure that we used when we did the courtyard towers with scoring and putting our eighth inch uh, score tape on, etc. And here are the completed roofs for the back corner towers. To cover the roof of the tall tower, I'm going to cut two triangular pieces with quarter inch tabs and then one long rectangle piece that we can uh, score and crease in the center and bring on both sides. Now I can do that because my paper is not directional. If you're going to use some directional paper you'll want to cut two pieces for this part that uh, joins in the center uh, and so that you can have the directional paper going in the correct direction on both sides. So I'm going to see if I can use this scrap and so to do that I'm just going to draw a little template of my roof section 
and to do that I'm going to measure in three and one half inches from the left side and make my large tick mark and then on coming in a quarter inch from the left side and then at three and one quarter which is a quarter inch in from the right side I'll make some smaller tick marks and then up here at the top I'll make a tick mark at one and three quarters one and three quarters and then my template again will join this tick mark on the top with the inside marks on the bottom move our ruler over a quarter of an inch from that line to draw for the tab and on this side again we'll connect that center mark to the inside quarter inch move our ruler over a quarter inch and if we cut on the outside lines this will be our template for the triangular sides of this roof so I've cut on those outside lines so here's my template and I've actually cut a second one as well because I'm going to need two of these and I also in order to span this and make a fold in it I need a piece that's two and a quarter wide and seven and a quarter long so I'm just kind of using a couple rulers here to mark out where that piece would come and now I can just kind of move these templates around and see if I have room to cut them out now this is non-directional paper um, so I can put them any which way I want if yours is directional then you have to uh, deal with that so I'm going to cut out my two templates and then a rectangle that is seven and one quarter by two and one quarter so I have my pieces of pattern paper cut out and I'm going to start with my triangular sections I've cut back just the corners on the bottom the tops on this one do not need to be cut back because um, the flat roof is coming across here and then I've prepped with um, score tape on the two tabs and used my marker on the bottom and the top edges and on both of them and then on each side of the triangle I've prepped with my 1 8, uh, 1 8 inch score tape so I'll go ahead and put these sides on just like I did for the uh, pyramid shaped ones where put, bring that edge down even and secure that bottom edge and then remove the score tape backing from inside and go ahead and put the that on and fasten the two tabs down and then repeat that for the second side now that my two sides uh, triangular sides are finished we can work on the part that goes over the top and halfway on this strip would be three and five eighths I'm going to because I'm using this checkered paper I'm going to move just a little bit past that so I can split one of my checks in half here and make that score and then fold that in half and with that folded in half I'm just going to do a, a dry fit here because we've cut it just a little bit long and then I can take my pencil or pen and make a mark making sure you hold this tight and carefully and cut that just on the inside of the marks that you drew and then test that again and then once you have your roof cut to the correct size I've prepped each side of the roof with some uh, score tape so that I can put one side on it at a time and also I've marked an A on this side of the roof and this side of the paper when I was cutting them to size just so that I make sure that the side that um, 
in case there's any differences in the two sides. So I've removed my score tape backing from one side and I'll go ahead and get that side in place here. And then I can remove my second side and put that in place. And then make sure you give everything a good burnish.